right, so Representative Keeler, would you like to move your bill? Um, our intention is to refer this to the State and Local Governments Finance and Policy Committee in this meeting today. And would you like to move your bill, Representative Keeler? Uh, yes, Chair, I'd like to move House File 211 before the committee with recommendation to move to State Gov Policy and Finance. All right, thank you, Representative uh, Keeler. The bill is before us. And Representative Keeler, once more for the record, would you like to identify yourself and then uh, begin your presentation? Sure. Thanks, Madam Chair. Representative Heather Keeler, District 4A, she, her, hers. Um, talking to you today about House File 211. Sorry, I have some, I, okay. Um, so what this bill does is it's similar to what we've done in the past around this bill is we're working on an effort um, to create Indigenous Peoples Day here in the state of Minnesota. Um, a couple things that I just want to pause and I guess ask the committee. Um, I know that we can't really do like show of hands, right? But the education setting just wants me to gauge the room. How many of you know and deeply understand the history regarding Eloise Cobell? How many of you know the treaty land in which your school and your district resides in? How many of you know the history of Deb Holland and the Department of Interior? These are all things that many people in Minnesota actually don't know the answer to. I sit here before you as a Cobell scholar. Um, Eloise Cobell was one of uh, the one of my heroes. I call her a shero, but she actually fought the U.S. government and won the largest U.S. government settlement in U.S. history based on misuse of land. These are just examples of some of the things that we can talk about in our education settings. And so, what this bill does is. If Indigenous Peoples Day becomes a state recognized holiday, if schools decide to have school on that day, they would be required to have a minimum of at least an hour of conversation around the Indigenous culture. Now, I know typically everybody always goes back to the trauma and the harm of genocide, which I always love to talk about because I think it's true and honest that we have to talk about the harm that's happened on this land. But there are also a lot of really beautiful things that we can talk about. We can share our language. We can share our dance. Um, as a jingle dress dancer, we've gone into many schools and have done examples of the history behind um, our dances, the history behind our language, the different language that we speak here on this land. And so um, today I have brought testifiers. They can do much more um, explaining why this is important for us to talk about it in our education settings. Um, this is not far off from the other state requirements and statutes that we have if we're in school for other state recognized holidays, um, such as Veterans Day and such, that there's a requirement that schools would do a minimum of an hour of conversation around those topics as well, so it's just lining statute with state holidays. Um, that's all I have for this chair, if we can move to our testifiers. All right, uh, thank you, Representative Keeler. I have first on the list, Cindy Milda, uh, and it could be my eyesight that makes me mispronounce some of the words, but I hope I, hope I saw that correctly. Um, would you please introduce yourself to the committee and proceed with your testimony? Chair and members of the committee, Ha Mataki Api, Shantewashte, Iu Ha Nape Chiu Zapi Ye, Ma Dakote Ye, Shakpe, Mede Wakantuan, Oyate, Ematahan, Amos and Rose Crooks, Tioshbe, Imataha, Dakote Ia, Pejuti Yaha Maniwi, Demiye, Demiye, Washitu Ia, Cindy Milda, Imaki Api Ye. Uh, in Dakota, what I said was, hello, my relatives. I greet you with a good heart and a warm handshake. I am Dakota, and my homelands are the Shakopee Midewakanton Sioux community. And I come from the Amos and Rose Crooks family. My Dakota name is Walks with Medicine Woman. Um, my English name is Cindy Milda, and, and I am the public education coordinator at the Shakopee Midwakton Sioux Community, or SMSC. Thank you for that identification. I think we're well placed now. <laughs> Thank you. So I am here today to testify in favor of House File 211. My role with SMSC is to share our community stories with groups from school and church groups to senior citizen and youth clubs at Hochikadati SMSC's Cultural Center. During these tours, I often tell my personal story as that um, really connects um, 
with people. Um, when I turned 18 years old, uh, not that long ago, <laughs> I was denied the right to vote in my home city, county, and state. SMSC members were subject to land status in a city that, it, that considered us illegal aliens at that time. It took Minnesota Supreme Court action in 1985 to restore our right to vote. Many people do not know this story. Uh, many people do not know the historic and ongoing resiliency of indigenous people. And as you can see, I use the word resiliency because I do not want to use the word historical trauma as we are very resilient people. So I want to put that out there, that we are very resilient and that we've come a long way from where we were. So taking that trauma out and changing that word and changing that, um, that context that, yes, we had that trauma, but we're still here. We're still resilient. And so that I share with you as well. Uh, there are educators out there who desire to know more about Indigenous history, not only our past, but our future and our story of resiliency. House File 211 will not suddenly create these resources for educators, but it opens a pathway for this conversation in a state-sanctioned way, and I hope you will support it. Pidama Yaye, thank you for your time, and I am happy to answer any questions. Thank you. And, you know, if there's clarifying questions or a question at this point, I think we can entertain those as we have different testifiers coming forward. Um, but seeing no questions, thank you. Thank you. All right, next up, uh, Mr. Sam Strong, Secretary of the Red Lake Nation. Please identify yourself and then proceed with your testimony. Bonjour, be mon say gnu indigenous cause, ma kwen du dem, miskwa gamu wi za gani gnu don juba. Bonjour, wabno. Jamno. Hakuno no ki wera no. Bonjour, nagani ze manu du. Nena bonjour, mamna na ki. Miguich ki shi gizes to be ki gizes to be ki gizes ani gok nish washin du du mishi ki. Ki ona shogi chi manu du. We do cover shogi chi manu du. Go chi wei so gnu so gmi tig za gani gmi no be mendishu an shlam be mendishu an. Uh, my name is Sam Strong. I'm Secretary of Red Lake. And uh, before I spoke today, I asked for um, assistance from our ancestors and assistance from, you know, when we pray, we recognize everything around us, you know, everything from, you know, the water to the sky and the stars and everything that allows us to be human being. And so we really believe all these things are interconnected and it's really important that we recognize those things. And I think we've really fallen out of balance in today's world. So it's important that we start out in that mentality as we talk about uh, our people and our history. You know, a lot of people talk about all the genocides that have happened over the course of history. And, you know, here in America, they say over 20 million people were, were murdered here on this very land. And yet we don't talk about that. You know, my grandmother was sent to a boarding school where they beat her and took away our language, and we don't talk about that in the schools. You know, my father was part of the Indian relocation program. They sent him here to Minneapolis. They sent many of our people to these urban centers with no resources, and you see the highest percentage of uh, homeless people being Native Americans. Those the hardest hit are the ones, the original inhabitants of this land, and we're forgotten. We're walked by on the streets. We're forgotten. And so today is about starting to turn the tide of that, that memory of who our people are and what we represent. Not only the historical memories, but the modern day living examples of who we are and what we're all about. And yes, we have trauma. Yes, our people have suffered and we still continue to suffer. You know, in Red Lake, we have over 10% of our population is still homeless. You know, over 40% of our children live in poverty. They don't have a, a house over their head. They don't have clothing and food to live. And yet we ignore the native people. We ignore the history that created these inequities. 
And so today is a start. By no means is it going to solve the problems that I talk about. But at least the acknowledgment of these historical facts, the acknowledgment of the harm that was caused is a good first step. And it's a step that many people neglect. They neglect to look at the truth behind what happened. They ne neglect to look at the truth of our people and the resilience that we have. They neglect to look at all the, the modern day examples of resiliency, the, the pride that we have in our, our language, our culture and our history, the things that we had to fight for. It wasn't until the 70s that we were able to practice our traditions. We had to continue our way of life in secret. We had to hide who we were or we were gonna be punished. And so let's start out by at least starting to educate people. Let's start out with some truth. You know, and the truth, it's hard. It's hard to digest what happened to our people. It's hard to digest that some of your ancestors may have participated in these horrible tragedies that occurred right here on this land. But if you really mean to, to make those wrongs right, we need to start with telling people the truth. We need to start by giving some time to these truths so we can begin to address these inequalities and these inequities that have happened from the direct result of state and federal government actions to eliminate our people. And so today, I, I try to come here in a good way and I speak with passion because when, when I do these things, I don't just speak for me, I speak for my ancestors, my grandmother, my father, I speak for those children that are suffering today. I also speak for the strength that we have. I also speak for the, the powwows and the culture and the language speakers. I speak for the immersion schools that we have where we're regaining our identity and our way of life. And so it's important that the community knows these truths and there's a reason for it. If we acknowledge the truths of the past, we will not replicate those in the future. But if we try to hide these facts, it will continue to happen. And if these facts are hidden, these inequalities will continue. And now we have become a part of that oppression as opposed to becoming a part of that solution. And so I urge you to think about our ancestors that have suffered. I urge you to think about those that are still suffering. But I also urge for you to learn more about the strengths of our people. I urge you to learn more about our language and our culture as they hold a lot of value in today's world. They hold value when it comes to global warming, when it comes to all the environmental catastrophes that we see going on, the drought, the lack of food in our world. These are a direct result of these inabilities to, to capture who we are and how we're connected to everything that we live within. And so I thank you for the time today. I'm more than happy to help educate or talk more on these issues. And um, miigwech for inviting me and miigwech for listening to this very important topic. Thank you, Mr. Strong. And I pause again to see if we do have any member questions at this point in, in our testimony. Yes. Uh, Representative Erdahl. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and uh, Representative Keeler. Uh, thank you for bringing this bill forward. Um, yes, it is important to educate. It is important to uh, recognize our, our Native people. I've spent much of my life as an educator and as a legislator striving to bring forth the truth about our history. And so the, the truth is important. Um, I, I will be supporting uh, the establishment of Indigenous Peoples Day. We have other days, uh, three others, um, that I, I wish we had some similar recognition to. I'm not doing any amendments or anything like that this year, but just bringing that up, that we do have a Veterans Day. We have Washington. We have Lincoln. Uh, we have Martin Luther King, obviously. And uh, it would be good if our schools, uh, if they were in session, would have an hour recognizing each of those as well. Uh, I think 
it's important to look at uh, the historical perspective regarding Columbus Day. It's not about really the man. I mean, I'm, there were some serious, uh, shall we say, deficiencies, I believe, in the, uh, in the history of Abraham, of Abraham Lincoln, <laughs> of, in the history of uh, Christopher Columbus. And, uh, but it was the Italian people who were being persecuted in a lot of our earlier history. And to some extent, Catholics. And in the early part of the 20th century, uh, Catholics and Italians basically banded together looking for some symbol that could elevate them in the eyes of the people of the, of the United States. Um, I would suggest that they could have chosen better than they did. But they chose Christopher Columbus as their symbol. Um, they could have been, again, a better choice, I mean, a more historically accurate choice, but that's what we have to this day. And so uh, I'm not a, opposed to having an Indigenous People Day. I, again, I think the truth is important. The history of Native people is important. Um, I would also wish that uh, some of these other days that we have would receive uh, similar emphasis in our, in our schools. Thank you, Representative Erdahl. And Representative Keeler. Thank you, Chair. Um, Representative Erdahl, in statute, it actually already does say on Martin Luther King's birthday, Washington's birthday, Lincoln's birthday, and veterans, at least one hour of school programming must be devoted to patriotic observance of the day. It's actually the language I took when I changed it. I just, instead of patriotic observation, we added examples of cultural um, ideas that schools could highlight. So that, that was just taking an example of what we're already doing in school standards um, and just making it more indigenized, I guess. So thank you. Uh, Representative Erdahl, follow-up? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, and Representative Keeler, you're, you are correct. Uh, however, from my experiences with schools and being in them as a teacher myself, uh, it, it's very inconsistent as to uh, if schools actually do place the emphasis on those. I, I remember when I taught, um, I did things for Martin Luther King in my classroom, but that was it. So all I was looking for is that it would be nice if there were some more consistency throughout the state uh, regarding this. For example, you are providing direction uh, regarding what should be done, but there is no direction for schools to follow regarding the other three days. Thank you, Representative Erdahl. All right, and uh, we will finish with our last uh, uh, testifier for this, this section of the bill presentation, Dolores Gabbard, a Moorhead Indian educator. Head, who um, is on remote you. right now. Are you able oh. to hear us okay? I'm able to hear you. Can you hear me okay? All right, thank you so much for being with us today. And I, it, it, maybe people can't hear me very well either, but if you can make sure that your voice is coming on strong, I think that will help the people of everyone in the room hear you. Hal Natakia P. Ampete de Chante, Iushki Anape, Chiuzi Pie, Dolores Gabbard, Amakia P. Dakota Chaze, Skake Wakawi. I'd like to thank you for having me today. Um, my name is Dolores Gabbard, and I work for Moorhead Indian Education Program in Moorhead, Minnesota, as a Indian Education Liaison. I've been in my position for approximately seven years, and um, I plan to be here till the end. I, I love what I'm doing, and I love the children that I work with. And I love the growth that we've seen as a school district and as a program. And, um, you know, I come here today to share a little bit about that. Um, you know, Heather Keeler and myself were kind of the catalyst for our school district to take a look at um, Columbus Day and, you know, to rewrite the narrative. Um, and that's continued. And I see, you know, great growth as a district to the point where um, decisions are being made and our program is being consulted first when it 
when it um, has to do with Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, so coming to us for guidance has been um, amazing. Um, and really what I feel like this bill would do is to change the narrative statewide for our students. Um, you know, I, I understand that there are some that still believe that it is important to learn about Columbus, um, but I think that it's also important to learn about the history of the Native Americans in this country and specifically in this state. And so, um, you know, having that um, Indigenous Peoples Day have that mandatory time um, would be an amazing, amazing step in the right direction. Um, you know, I also wanted to talk about, um, you know, the historical trauma piece that the other testifiers talked about um, and the injustices. Uh, you know, and I think that just comes back to um, rewriting the narrative and um, honoring the history of the Native Americans in this state and the, the experiences that we have had. And we talk about, you know, as educators, about closing achievement gaps. And so as a state, I, I would hope that we would realize that, um, you know, things like these, or things like this bill um, would be able to help with that. Um, you know, I'm just talking about the other days that we celebrate, um, you know, with Abraham Lincoln and Columbus Day. And, you know, if you know history well enough and the injustices that um, those people were a part of against Native Americans, um, I think that you might see it from a different perspective. Um, sorry, I'm a little bit emotional about it today. <laughs> I apologize. Um, <clears throat> I think that's probably all that I have to say. If anybody has any, oh, sorry, there's one more thing that I wanted to say. If you think about Minnesota and our current demographics, and I don't know about other areas in the state, but I do know that in our school district, our Native American numbers are growing exponentially, and um, I don't think that's going to change. And so I think that when we consider our audiences in schools, that it does make sense to um, to rethink what we're teaching our kids. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, even on remotely, you can sense somebody's emotion uh, and caring for these for this issue. So we appreciate that you continued and completed your points. Um, okay, so we do have one more. Okay, sorry. We're clarifying another testifier that's for later on, actually, not for your bill, a representative Keeler. Um, so, um, so we do have uh, public testimony um, from our Department of Education, uh, Mr. Dosh Uni. Um, if he is able to come forward at this time and present. Mr. Rooney, please identify yourself for the record and proceed with your testimony. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, committee members. My name is Ado Shuni. I'm the Director of Government Relations for the Minnesota Department of Education. And uh, Madam Chair, again, uh, Representative Keeler, uh, committee members, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to testify in support of this bill. MDE is more than happy to voice our support for this initiative. On October 14, 2019, Governor Walz proclaimed the day Indigenous Peoples Day in Minnesota and has done so in all subsequent years. Our state is honored to have the highest serving Native American woman in state office with our Lieutenant Governor Peggy Flanagan 
a member of the White Earth Nation. <clears throat> Recognizing Indigenous Peoples Day has been a stance that the governor, lieutenant governor, and the new commissioner are proud to uphold. It is far past due that we as a state elevate, validate, and honor the voices of Native people who are the first residents of the land upon which we now sit. Our schools are not only a place of learning, of learning academics and materials, but also understanding how that subject applies to the world around them, the people around them, and their surroundings. Our tribal nations are distinct government bodies, not just our neighbors and community members, whose role in and contributions to our country is deserving of a day of recognition. Native Americans have a long history on these lands, have strong cultural beliefs, and they are an integral part of our country's history, present, and future. MD believes that a body of people with so much to contribute to our students' learning experience is important to hold space for. MDE's Office of American Indian Education and the Indigenous Education <coughs> Specialists continue to stand ready to provide schools with the information and resources to be able to speak about Native history and culture accurately and holistically. Again, the Commissioner and MDE are happy to support HF 211 <laughs> and thank Representative Keeler for her work to elevate the importance of Indigenous Peoples Day. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uni. <coughs> Representative Keeler. Uh, all right, well, any other member discussion at this point? Excuse me, Representative Burke. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'm sitting in this room at nearly 50 years old. And I wanna talk about the fact that, what, last year I learned about the brutality and the legacy of boarding schools. How is that okay on any level that I went through my entire educational career, ended up in this house, and I didn't know about boarding schools? The people that came here today to explain their very existence to us, who were vulnerable, to teach us about a history in these short few moments that we should have already known, Representative Keeler carrying this bill, two sessions in a row. Like, I learned all about Washington, Lincoln, Christopher Columbus. Didn't know about boarding schools. Let's remember that, members, when we take this vote. vote. Thank you, Representative Keeler, for carrying this, for showing us what we should have always known, and for doing this for the future generations that will sit in classrooms and hopefully understand not only the land that they are living on, but the history of your beautiful people. Thank you, Representative Berg. Other member discussions? All right. Representative Keeler, any final words? Um, thank you for providing the opportunity to have this conversation. This is a conversation I've been advocating for for years. Um, when I, I mentioned this when we did our intros, when I did my practicum work, the number one response that our kids had um, to their, their barriers to academic success was that they didn't feel seen. Um, and I know as an individual who holds four degrees, I've never seen a teacher at the front of a classroom who looks like me, therefore they're also not talking about us in curriculum and in a world that we're very much visible. I think we need to stop the invisibility of us in education settings. So I appreciate a yes vote on this to move it forward. Thank you. All right, with that, Representative Keeler does renew her motion to move House File 2111 to the State Local Government Finance and Policy Committee. Policy Committee. All in favor of that motion, please vote aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Representative Keeler.